like the Trinity Force, you can't really take Chem Tank on Hecarim anymore. If you are, you're just playing support style jungler. You might as well play Uder at that point. Hecarim's really the same thing as Nocturne in terms of Sterics is his best second item. It's OP, like dives, 2v2s, team fights, and then you can obviously still get like dead mans or something like that. But I wouldn't recommend playing him. He's really not worth it. Teen, he's full HP, and uh, he does AP damage, which your champ pool doesn't currently have. Plus, Nocturne is the same thing as Hecarim right now. He really is. Hecarim can gank more pre-6, but that's about it. That's the only real difference. Because it, it, the, the, the only other real difference prior to now was that Hecarim was tankier than Nocturne. Nocturne was more of an assassin, but with this Sterix meta, you can see my screen, right? Yes. Okay, but with this Sterix meta, they're really just as tanky as each other, to where you're not tank, more tanky on one than the other. They, they, with these item changes, you're a newer player, but with the way they've been changing items, every champion kind of builds the same items. Like every 80 melee champion, they always get Sterics if they didn't go shield bow. Mm -hmm. You smite it, you had your W on, that's fine. You're queuing it, you're kiting it out this way, looks good. Let's speed it up. I don't know why you kited back to the right there, that was random. Just keep kiting to your next camp like that, looks good. W queue immediately. I like how you pull it away, that's good, keep pulling it. Listen, you can pull the whole Raptor camp into this bush and you won't it won't lose one bar of patience. You can keep the whole thing entirely in the bush and even the edge of the bush over here. Same thing on the other side. You don't have to keep it out here because, yeah, sometimes mid laners do lame crap like this. And, uh, oh, okay, she only got one. We should yeah, still yeah. hit level three, I think. Yeah, yeah, I will. I will. I still got level three. Okay, there. thank God. But, yeah, just keep pulling it out. There's, there's really no rush. You can get it all the way into the bush, and when she goes for her Q, you can pull it out past the bush, pull it back in if you want. All right. Oh, so you just went double point Q. You're just going full clear. Mm -hmm. On Hecarim, you do have the option right now. He's getting a little bit more cheesy. The more off meta and the lower win rate a champion gets, the more cheese crap they have to do to stay relevant. So like, mm -hmm. right now, it's actually a thing to do like red golem wraps, gank into mid, then you do like two camps and then into scuttle. So you basically okay. build, you, you, what? No, like right now, if I was to like try to gank anything, do you say like do you think there's anything gankable? No. Because at the, least to me, mid doesn't look gankable. Yeah, it's not. It's because it's Kata. You, you picked a selfish champion. But uh, yeah, if it was like, a real champion, like if you had an Annie mid or even a Zed, I'd say so. But uh, yeah, Kata is really useless at the start. The enemies basically have to make mistakes or just do weird stuff and then she roams. But yeah, that's fine. I'm just saying like in the future, if you have a real mid lane champ, you can do a cheese gank into like double camp into scuttle and it builds you prio to where if you know you win the 1v1 scuttle you can take it guaranteed or if you don't your mid laner can even rotate since they got that prio diff off mm -hmm. the gank you take the same time looks good it clears a little bit on the slow side i i don't know what happened ideally we should be finishing like 318 kind of at the latest I don't know if this is strictly because of the Hecarim early game Q nerfs, but this is painful that it's taking this long. Nice job taking them together, though. If this, if they had, like, a jungler who truly rushes down Scuttle, it'd already be gone because of the way they change Smite. If you Smite Scuttle, it completely removes the shield and does full Smite damage, or obviously you can just remove the shield and then Smite. Either is fine, but uh, if they were on at 315, it'd be gone by now. So keep that in mind. <clears throat> You eat into it immediately. I think you could... I guess that's okay. It'd be kind of awkward if uh, the Volley Bear showed up. I like how you pushed it top lane. That's actually really good since you saw they were preoccupied fighting to the death. Pushing it in that direction is probably better. Unless you thought they were a full clear jungler. In which case they're going to be coming from Golems to where you'd want to push it this way. It just really depends on what Volley Bear wants to do. Volley Bear, he actually has... Uh, I ran it, I put it on YouTube, but he can do a full clear, 315, full HP, double, and still have double refill. Uh, just like bot start in the red side, finishes 315, then he comes up from Golem. So just keep that in mind when you're taking Scuttle. Are they going to be coming from a full clear off Golems, or are they going to be coming this way? If you thought he was coming this way, then pushing it top was good. If you thought he was coming from top, then obviously you'd want to push it this way, and then that gives like an extra 6 to 8 seconds to take the Scuttle. I don't really see a point of invading Volibear. Realistically, you shouldn't beat him in a 1v1. Fighting a Volibear, Warwick, Olaf, they're very similar in terms of their self-heal and scrappiness. He even went Conqueror, so you're not really at the conk advantage that you think you might be. Oh, you see him bot lane. Okay. Maybe that's why you went in. 
The word's kind of pointless though. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have bothered to go word. When I saw the Raptors would be down, it's just, eh. Maybe in higher elo, but in this elo, your teammates half the time aren't paying attention or the jungler's just gonna do weird stuff anyways. <clears throat> You're going for this scuttle. Every time you see the jungler on the map, it's not enough to just... <sighs> so you can use F keys whenever you want. I'm not gonna say you have to use F keys, but obviously whenever there's a fight, someone dies or there's a wave under turret, you want to click to see if it's a dive, how many minions there are, whether you can go, what's the HP mana look like. When it comes to junglers, and seeing the enemy jungle, you always have to click on the minimap to see, just in, like if your teammate isn't close enough, right? So you're going to click on the minimap because you have to see which buffs they have. You have to know if they have red buff and blue buff on. You have to know when you click on them, you can see like how much longer each one has. So you know exactly where they started, which will let you know which camps are down. So in, in this case, when we do see Volley bot lane for 10 years, for some reason, like this was awful. Uh, he's 20 CS. This makes no sense. He should be full cleared by now he should have done a scuttle into a gank and a reset uh but it's four minutes into the game and he's 20 cs bot lane farming it makes no sense i don't know what happened but so you see him bot you see he has his blue buff so he obviously did red side clear in the blue side since he doesn't have red buff anymore so you can imagine his blue side's probably down we're not going to want to invade that his first camps to spawn in are going to be his raptors and golems uh i push this towards your mid yeah or at this point, you could push towards bot since you have bot prio. This is fine though. You get the scuttle. You could go take his raptors at this point. We knew his red side was gonna be up since he was bot with blue buff. Uh, could gank mid. This is fine, I guess. <clears throat> We're gonna E over. Just start your E a little bit later so you can actually hit the camp with the damage. You see he's on his raptors now. He hasn't backed yet. So you're on even footing with him. Well, before you go into fights, just make sure you press tab. Because even though he's behind, like let's say he backed and he had like a long sword or he bought like, some HP, you would still lose the one versus one even though he's technically behind because he has item advantage. <sighs> you see the Diana bot lane. Uh, I'm not crazy about this play, honestly. I'd say just leave it. If, if you think she can really dive it, I guess. But uh, wait, what's happening? Where's their AD carry? I didn't actually realize she was only level 4. That's the thing. I, I thought she was higher level. Because 5 minutes level 4 mid is kind of low. Uh, yeah, I guess this is fine. I thought their AD carry was here, but it's actually just Janna, Diana. You made the right play, man. Nice, nice yeah, call. And, and then Kata did a really good TP actually there. I, I don't think she needed it. I'm not sure, but the TP was good regardless. And then we just ended up cleaning it up. Yeah. That's just Katarina stuff. I, I would give the kill if you could to Kata, honestly. She's, she's a much more meta champ than you are, and with a gold, she can do way more than you can do with her resets and roams. So if you can, when it comes to Katarina, Master Yi, or heck, even just give them the gold to Tristana. They can do more with it than you can, unfortunately. I, I don't say that about many jungle champions, because even if that's true, you still want the gold so you can consistently carry, because you seem like a very consistent player. Like Nocturne, I would have been fine with you taking that, but realistically on Hecarim, <laughs> you should probably give it with how bad he is right now. Uh, I guess I wasn't, I wasn't really aware on how bad Hecarim actually is. Like, I knew the nerfs were big, right? Yeah. But I, I thought he's still okay, <laughs> but I suppose he's not. Yeah, it, they put him in a really rough spot with nerfing Deadmans, they nerfed Chem Tank, and they nerfed his early game Q damage. Your team's so high damage, Riven's... Like, look at your team. Riven's a hyper carry champion. Cat is a hyper carry champion. I don't know where Tristan is. Tristan is a hyper carry champion. And I mean, even Lux kind of is, and she does a lot of damage too. To where you don't have to do damage this game. You could literally build War Mogs if you wanted to, and like uh, Dead Man. You could build full tank, and it wouldn't change the outcome of this game, like in a negative way. To where, even though Chem Tank's been nerfed a lot, this was probably a Chem Tank game. But uh, if your team is lower damage, like let's say you had a Jin or Ezreal bot. And then mid lane, you had a Galio, or if you had like an Orn top, then there's a higher justification for Trinity. But like I said, you don't, you don't even have to do any damage this game. Your team's got ridiculous amounts of it. All you have to do is keep Volibear and Diana and kind of Aatrox like off of your back line, or keep them from CCing the Cat R with your R. Basically, you're not gonna be able to stop that. They'll CC her R instantly. But mm. yeah, I wouldn't. I don't know. I mean, if Triss wants to back, help her push. What's their HP look like? I don't think Tristana necessarily necessarily has to back here. I mean, if you want to make that call, if she's not asking for help, I wouldn't do it. All right. But uh, she is low. Like if, if this was higher elo, they would definitely want to reset. 
and to where you just shove the wave out. But at, th at this point, once you take those, I would shove unless she starts freaking out. I'm surprised she didn't ping you. She is trying to freeze, which Tristana can't really do because of her E, I'm sure, as you're aware. But she can kind of slow push, do a very slow push when they have minion advantage like this, which she's trying to do. But now at this point, the push is broken because the next minion she autos. Is. So I, I get what you're trying to do there. You have an easy dive mid. Just look around at the two closest lanes. You, you don't even really need to look at top. You can't access that unless you had TP or a Shenar. So the only thing you're looking at is mid and bot right now. You see an easy dive mid. R. <clears throat> nice. Get away from this area immediately. If you don't know where Volley Bear is, this is really dangerous. Especially if he was level 6 and you're having your E's on cooldown, your R's on cooldown, he could kill you. Like, let's say if he's on Raptors or if he's on Red Buff, he'll, he'll kill you with his damage output. Like, you're dead. So, I would just kite the, these Raptors out and pull them away from the wall. You're back to full HP. Now that your E's up, he can't kill you. So, now you're in the safe zone again, so you can actually push deeper. Riven's really low. I probably wouldn't touch this, to be honest. She does have Executioners, but... Like... You're gonna see this took like I think two minutes or whatever, but we ended up killing him. It was really strange, but you're gonna see in a bit. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> this is I guess if Aatrox doesn't have R, but if you think he has R, this is kind of sus. Especially like imagine if Volley Bear's here. Like pretend Volley Bear's here. Like imagine how this turns out. You drop a 150 shutdown, Riven dies, they get three turret plates. When she realistically she should just catch this wave and then reset. Like, okay, you see Volibear bot now. Now this is a okay play, but until we knew where Volibear was, this was extremely uh, risky. Yeah. So like immediately he turns on her. And he's on his R. He's over chasing. He just needs to turn on you and kite you out on his minions. And at this point, it's a wasted gank. At this point, you showed where you were on the mini map. If the enemies wanted to, they could take Dragon, or they have the option to. This was a waste of time. Uh. So she's just too low. She didn't have potions. If you had your R, I would say otherwise. But without your R, like, what are you going to do? It's a level 8 Aatrox or a level 6 uh, Hecarim. And Hecarim's garbage right now. Now, if this was Hecarim pre-nerfs, maybe. But that's tough. So you're, you're farming, you're farming. I mean, like, once again, even if you show up, dude, she's so low. Like, unless he goes in for a full... F like, even if he's diving her, once he sees you, you can just walk away. Like, this is a big waste of time. Unless your R's up. No, it's not. Your R's not up. Like, he doesn't have to do this. He's he's acting weird. I guess his R is on cooldown. We'll see. We kill him here. Yeah. Your Conqueror's making the diffy. Riven's R is up. You guys pinch the kill. Nice job, dude. Shove the wave. Get turret plates. There's no reason to back. You might as well help her with two plates at least. Since there's two of you, you wouldn't really go for more than three together. You just crank out two. You could even start Herald if you want, if you think Volibear is not in the area, but there's really no incentive to back. There's there's no rush. And yeah, look at that. Volibear is even pathing back Botlin like a goon. He saw you top, so he's going for Dragon. Trading off a Dragon for Herald's really garbage. So if you guys got this Herald, that would, you guys, like, like let's say you Riven gets a plate or two, you would go for Herald. You come back top, you kill Aatrox, you get first turret, and then get one more Herald body slam. So we get our Trinity Force. And we would have Trinity Force to go kill him after we take the Herald. Get wraps. Uh, looks like the enemy bot lane is relatively frozen. This is gankable if your R's up, which it is. You guys win this fight, you check items immediately, and you look at him you're like, okay, he doesn't have red buff, and you're like, okay, he's not full item. We easily win this, which you do. We both conquer. They're backing away. Uh, Harold's still up. I'd really like us to get that. That's how you end games. Harold is the best way to end games. Going for wolves. Take blue ground same time. Raven, once again, Raven's losing all of her HP. Like, she's making these ganks way harder than they need to be. That This top gank worked out because Aatrox's R was on a cooldown and Raven's R was up. That was about it. If his R was still up, this would have been a huge waste of time. Because he would have had the speed up to get away. Kata comes in for the pinch. He's still like full HP while she's a third. You're here to follow up. And you get the kill because Kata's fed. And uh, yeah, like she actually soloed him. You technically didn't do any damage. Kata did that much damage to Aatrox with no full item just because Sork's shoes and he doesn't have any magic resist. 
Now at this point, yep, you just go for Herald immediately. You don't look for the gank. You shouldn't need to. She's already ahead and she's like full HP. Diana shouldn't really have kill pressure on her right now. You can gank if you want, but Herald's more important. And th think about it this way. 14 minutes is too late. 14 minutes, all the plates fall off. Look at this. Five turret plates. Five turret plates. Four turret plates. You you squandered an opportunity after the initial Aatrox gank for you and Riven to take two plates and a potential Herald. You got you squand you guys squandered a potential take again. Volley Barrett came to show up. So hopefully we start getting some turret plates. So you go break the ward. That's actually bad. There's no reason to break that. You showed yourself on the map. Whenever you are attacking a ward like that, it will show you, even though it couldn't see you before that because of the control ward. I'm pretty sure that was a normal ward, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah, we don't we don't want to do that. Wait, could, did she just? I think you did it because you thought your ward couldn't see it. I'm pretty sure your ward can see. I think she just laid it fresh though, because it says 100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you look closely, I think you just got confused there. You thought your ward couldn't see it, but she literally just laid it like right there. And if you pay attention to even after your sweeper ends, your sweeper is over and you see the disabled constantly refreshing at full. But yeah, it's just a waste, but that's fine. She, she saw you with it when she first laid it. Volleybear's red buffs up. There's a potential play there since you're full item. I don't know where we're going right now. We might as well push for Herald. If you have mid prio, like Heralds are free and you're also bigger than Volleybear right now. There's no reason to really rummage around for camps. You're three and oh, you're ahead. We're taking a straight red buff once again. And here's the thing, man. Herald's on a six minute timer. Uh, Around 940 or 950, the or I should say 1950, the Herald is gone forever, the second Herald. So if you take this bad boy too late, you're not going to get access to the second Herald. So th th think of the 19 minute mark. Pretend the 19 minute mark, there is no second Herald anymore. Uh, that way you don't go there too late. Because if you don't actually attack it at like 1930, like if you're running at it at 1930, even if you're fed, the, the, Herald, the second Herald will just disappear. It's really annoying. But if you're in combat with it, then it'll disappear at like 1950. But... Uh, yeah, so we ideally we're we're so far ahead. You're ahead. Your cat is ahead. Ideally, we should be just pre pressure mid, get Harold. That way we can get the second one at the 18 minute mark, and end this game. Because if you're ahead and you're only getting access to one out of two Heralds for no reason, it's just like eh, you're making it harder on yourself than it needs to be. You're waiting for them to step up. I don't know if we swept this. I don't know if that's worded. Ideally, we don't go in for ganks unless we have a sweeper or a control word. Without without having a sweeper up or having a control ward, they're essentially a waste of time. Unless you know for a fact it's not warded or or you think there's like a 95% chance it's not. We have a tier 2 boots now. Looks good. I mean, you could just go for Lucidities, to be honest. They are AD heavy. Now you can't go for Herald. Your two or three different Herald opportunities are now not doable at this exact moment. Because your top lane just died and volleys in the area. You grab that wave. I, you can solo him. If you if you're if you pay attention to items like if you click around and then you just press tab you see he's not full build so unless you think volley's like hiding in bush this guy's dead because you have plated steel caps he has plated steel caps you're both tied in the armor and speed front you have 400 base movement speed he's at uh, 390 so you even have higher base movement speed than this guy and once you're in combat your trinity it makes you hella fast like whenever you hit people you get like extra don't you get extra movement speed yeah, you get 25 extra movement speed whenever you hit an enemy champion, and you get and it stacks up to five times. So you just have five max increase 26, or is that mid? And that might just be for the 80. But anyways, you get extra movement speed. I, I would take the kill on him. You see, especially dude, you just saw volley bear mid. This is free, and you're saving your turret. That's a win-win-win. You have red buff. Even though he's level up on you, you have a, a insane item advantage. You have, you, you have 2,000 more item than him right now, at least. Because all he has is that stupid Iron Spike Whip. Plus Red Buff. Red Buff alone is like a level and a half worth of damage. I, what, 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 what's going through your mind right now? Why are you walking back and forth in this area so much? I actually don't remember why I did that. <laughs> yeah, we're walking. We're doing like the the carousel. Like the horse is going around in a circle. We're going around, going around, going around, going back that way. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he just got like half of your turret. We could have killed him the whole time. Uh, it, it would be really nice to get that Herald just like shove mid, go push for it, or just kill the Aatrox. Once again, dragons don't really matter, or at least the first two. 
no reason to chase for kills we're already ahead we're not trying to build leads right now we're trying to like we're trying to maintain our lead and end the game like we don't we don't have to force random stuff we're ahead we're three and oh with full item we're walking around walking around harold's up this whole time harold's looking like a double wide surprise over there and guess what you're not gonna get the second herald now herald six minutes dragons five minutes the second herald no longer exists it's gone forever like we need to get herald we really need to get herald before uh 13 minute mark ideally because that 13 minute mark you're cutting it close so think think about that like if you want to get both heralds in your head you need to get the first one before 13 minutes going for the r well let's see how you played that mechanically real quick i'm not sure what you did there So keep, keep this in mind. Your R keeps your E refreshed full duration and gives it a half second at the end. So it, let's say you juiced your E all the way. Let's say you juiced it all the way to get here. You could R on top of him. And during your R duration, it keeps your E refreshed for like half a second to where you can then use it. So just keep that in mind. All right. So you, you don't have to E this up. I would call this e in late because you're not getting full movement speed and whatever. So you R on him. Honestly, there was no reason to R there. T typically when you're using your e this forward into r you're doing it to get to them like you would have e'd thrown out a fat r which would have feared him and then your r gets behind him which would have feared him this way your fear pushes them away from your current position so boom he's feared Move, moving this way and then smack you smack into him with your e like that works but at this point he's like already under your turret and he's taking aggro because he's about to bop ribbon so like I, ideally, the most optimal way this could possibly be played is first let him take turret aggro by hitting Riven, unless you think he's going to kill her with one hit. If you think he's going to kill her with one hit, then sure, stop him. But I don't think he can. So ideally, you let him hit her here to take turret aggro. Right when that hit connects, you just smash into him with your E. There's no reason to waste R. Just bop him with your E. It's going to push him into turret, and then you can chain out your CC a little bit better. Like, you were already on top of him with your E. Your R is an even better gap closer. So if you would have bopped him with your E, he would be under turret right now. He would have flashed out right here. He'd be here instead of there. And now you'd have your R to catch him. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And now he's going to get away, obviously, because Blast Cones are OP. And they spawn in way too fast and way too often. There's a weird spot in the late game where there's, like, always a Blast Cone here and always one here. So if you're ever trying to chase them out of your base, they literally just, like, Mario jump away. It's obnoxious. I think that's on the other side as well there's like one here and then there's one here late game it's really stupid but you can actually use that one to make some uh, big plays it's, it's, it's kind of it's so cheesy dude i don't like blast cones in the late game like early game it's like whatever but late game when people are making game winning plays off of blast cones, it's so frustrating yeah finally finally we're on the herald like this is the final herald at, the, at basically the if you're taking the herald later than the 13 minute mark that's the only herald in the game so this is the only herald congratulations you guys have the only herald now one of a kind non-fungible <laughs> you're on the raptors you're just kited away yeah there's no reason to force it you would check his items obviously before you run or before you decide to engage i should say you see your equal items or he has slightly more so you just leave it even if you're higher level there's no reason to force a weird fight on their side just leave 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 he wastes red smite on you he smites you way too early that's even more incentive not to fight it oh and he went blue smite I mean, it's not bad uh, you just don't have to is the thing even if you look at the win rates and pick rates you'll see red smites more prevalent just because red smite is op if you think about it if you have your e and r on hecarim is anyone really gonna outrun you or escape your cc probably not to where if you now if you have red smite you could solo diana if you have red smite you could solo volley bear easily if you had red smite you might even be able to solo the atrox so i would i would try to make the move away from uh blue smite at least on hecarim run most junglers in general unless you literally have to like have it to land your main ability which you don't because your e and your ghost and your r yep you could e earlier especially when your r's up you don't have to e this late because like i said your r extends the duration of your e as long as you're actually landing your r like you can e as early as you want basically you are on her you bop her you get her moving towards your teammates nice kill you're gonna shove wave take turret this game we did not get a single plate top. We did not take a single plate mid. We did not take a single plate top or bottom or mid. We we missed out on a lot of gold and we we're ahead. 
Ideally, we're ganking and then taking plates. 14 minute mark, plates are gone. But it's good, you're not dying. You're not making the mistake of just randomly being out of position and dying like a lot of players do. That's good, that's why you don't have many deads. Yeah, stay with the Herald. There's no reason your team should have backed. That was actually bad. Uh, she's full health. There's just... I would ping them to stay. They can't base race. If they want to base race, they lose the game. You can't out base race a Herald Tristan. It's impossible. Like, even if they were on this turret, you guys would still probably win the base race. And they're not on that one yet. So, nice job staying with the Herald. Your teammates should have stayed too. Uh, if Tristan was here, you guys could kill this turret. And use the Herald for another bop. And you could have zoned Janna or whoever off. And gotten another bop off on that one. Tristana back. She can't jump in, obviously. Ooh, sheesh. Holy crap. Volleyball we saw her. Yeah, but he used that a really weird timing. You decide that uh, you can't get there in time, which is true. There's probably no reason to back. I like taking the Gromp. You're 40 CS up on this guy. You take his Wolves. Take his Blue. At this point, you're in two main options. There's no point to recall. You could maybe try to cheese a kill down over here, but you're sitting on a shite load of gold. So that's... All right, how much gold are you sitting on? You're only sitting on 1,000? Okay, you're seeing on a little bit of gold. You could maybe cheese a kill here if your R was up. Since it's not, I would probably either go kill Diana. That is probably the best option. If Diana wasn't shoved up or if she was top, I would just run over to his Raptors and then take his other shit. I would just run straight through the turrets. I don't care if they know. You get the blue buff. I would have killed that Diana though. Diana's looking, she away there. She's looking hella juicy. Oh, she did, she did, she did. Yeah, she did flash. That's not bad. Your R for a flash. Your R cooldown's a minute and a half. Flash is a five minute cooldown. At the end of the day, if you're using your R for their flash, as long as you're not dying, it's not the end of the world. As long as it's not early game. Like, <laughs> when you're first level six, you don't want to trade an R for a flash. That's not good. But at this point in the game, it's fine. Get All the right. Raptors, take the red buff. I've dropped taking his camps. You're not just AFK in your jungle. That, there was a really weird moment where you were so far ahead of. You had full item advantage on the Aatrox and the Volley Bear. And uh, you weren't taking Herald and you weren't pressuring turrets. And you were just like standing in your jungle for like 30 seconds. Like this is better though than doing that. Even though you're not on an objective. Just taking his camps instead. I like it. He's putting him really far behind. And you're building a level lead. Somehow he's the same level as you. I don't get that. He must have st stolen a lot of mini next Because you're fifth, about 50 CS up on him. And you're about tied in KP. Your team is forcing weird play. I'd ping them off if you can. There's no point of typing. Like typing back off. People take things personally when you type it. They feel nagged. But when you ping, as long as they're polite pings, try not to ping directly on top of them. That's actually bad. Can I ping here? Let me see if I can. Yeah, I don't think it'll let me ping in the replay. I can show you how to ping like a champ though. It's not letting me do it. But I, ideally you don't ping directly because you see how the pings cover the little champion icons on the minimap? You mm -hmm. see that? They, that's a bad ping. If you can't see what the champion is, it is a bad ping. You can ping near it and they still get the idea. But if you're ever pinging and it's literally covering, covering which champion circle it is on the minimap, that was a bad ping. But uh, that's not the point. Let's get back to our... Alright. Yeah, just ping them off. This is a weird fight. I guess Volibear's dead, Janna's dead. I guess this is good. I just don't understand why people are fighting. Like, what, what caused this? Okay, Tristana jumps in, making a big play on the Janna. She runs it down. And then why does it continue? <laughs> like, they got the kill, and then they just chase. Riven gets the pick on Volley. Diana goes in. You're like, all right, here I go. Boom, you go on in the Aatrox. Probably wouldn't go for the Aatrox. He's going to heal too much. Until you have heal cut, if you're playing against a Volley Bear Warwick Aatrox, you're going to need to get Executioners or Bramble. At least Bramble, if not just Executioners. You can't kill this guy ever. Now that he has his Gore Drinker, which he didn't have that time top lane, now that he has Gore Drinker, by the time you get him half health, his Gore Drinker is going to be back up, and then he'll get back a third of his health. So th this is impossible. You just focus on Diana. You start focusing Diana, then your Kata. Shreds, shreds, shreds. Nice drop staying on top of him. At this point, you guys just take... Uh, I think you guys take Inhib, honestly. Like, if you want, you guys could rush Baron immediately. I like take... One of you goes drag and the rest go Baron. That's an option. I'd say you guys just take Inhib. Or if you can't get Inhib, I'd say take all these mid turrets, which is freaking enormous amount of gold and map pressure. Take all the turrets, leave Inhib open and take Dragon. And then you guys can just kill them again and take Baron. I, either... Any of those options are good. 
Ooh, the dragon's the worst option, though. That was a bad, bad choice, in my opinion. There's, there's no reason... Okay, here's the thing. If you're moving away from them, you're moving away from them. You guys are already moving away from them, and they haven't spawned yet. You guys could minimum take two turrets into dragon. Minimum. Safe option. Like, going straight for dragon here is pointless. Very pointless. Like, you even have wave on turret. You're not waiting for a wave to show up. It's already here. Like this, this was by far the worst option. Uh, the newbies... I'd say this is the newbiest option. The second newbiest option would have just been leaving turret and rushing straight for Baron. That would have been second newbiest. But anything better than that would have been minimum taking this turret then doing either. Or at least that in the dragon. But we get dragon. They still have their mid outer turret 22 minutes in the game for some reason. Lux kind of runs back thinking if she wants to do it, she starts to back instead. You get your sterics like every 80 melee champion in the whole game does. They always get sterics second to third item. Regardless. Unless they have shield bow, in which case it won't let them build it. They're pretty AD heavy. You should probably just get a bramble at this point. I was building it, I think, like the two regular cloth armors. That's the right move. Triss gets picked, just leave, just farm. Yeah, the bramble's good. I would say you probably need an executioners because they're not going to be focusing you too much in terms of Aatrox. Bramble only works off of autos or like on hit abilities. Like I think GPQ and Ezreal Q technically apply the bramble. But like when, when Aatrox is smacking you in the face with his Qs, if you haven't, like your Bramble's not going to do anything. But if you have Executioners and you smack him with one Q, it does. So I'll just keep that in mind. They actually have to hit you with an auto or an auto-based ability. Cat is going to have issues if Diana just saves her R for her. She's never going to be able to R. Right now, Cat is your guy's main source of heal cut on her R. It's like a 60% heal cut, I believe. AoE. Really good. Okay, Jin Sever, you go kill him right now. The second you see a behind AD carry by themselves, you go kill him. It's that simple. He's dead. No reason. Just skip the camp. If, if you're going to have to miss one camp for it, it's fine. Did you, it wasn't like you thought their whole team was there anyways. You saw several of them mid. Tristan is 5 and 6. It's fine to give it to her at this point. It'd be about equally good on both of you. Ooh, we're a little out of position. I'll just... What, ha what happened to our E there? So basically, Lux is out of position. Volibear goes in with Chem Tank. I don't... I just don't know why we didn't E. I, I would have probably uh, E'd Volibear to use it as a dash to get away. So it looks like we just E'd. Volibear pulls back. Diana jumps on us. She hits... Whoa, Jesus. Where... Did we R in that fight? I'm so confused. Where's our R? We are or is up. What's happening? When do we are? Okay, you are point blank range to fear the Diana. I mean, that's fine, but uh, when it comes to mages in general, like if Annie drops Tibbers and her abilities and kills like your whole team and then you are her, it doesn't really do much, but uh, it's better than nothing at this point. I, ideally, we would have, like, as she was jumping in, try to stop her, but that's really tight timing. Probably can't anyways. Somehow you guys start winning the fight because Diana's dead. And then Katarina does Katarina things and kills their whole team. Nice job, dude. Nice, nice job uh, securing that R on Diana. Did they, they actually lost a team fight when she hit, like, a five-man R. Jesus, that's just game over. If you can't win a team fight with five-man Diana R, there's no hope. All right, so after this fight, once again... <laughs> We win a fight. Um, this like, uh, reason... Wait, say oh, that again. Sorry. Say that again. No, no, I was about to say the reason we lost. Maybe I'm just not seeing it, but she has no mythic, right? Like, uh, oh, that's Diana. why. But if she had it, we would have lost the fight. Yeah, possibly. To be fair, she did have 14 mesh plus two full item, but that is something. I guess that's. Uh... Yeah, I guess if she had a mythic on top. So in this case, since you guys didn't have minions, it's fine to just rush down to Baron or Dragon, since we would have to wait. But in the other case, when the minions are already there, just smash as many turrets as you can, then pull back into a fast objective like Dragon. But in this case, it's fine. Your minions are really far away. You guys rush down Dragon. I mean Baron. Take camps. There's nothing happening. You're just AFK farming it up. Now all you know you need to do in a fight is go for Diana or just like peel her off your team. Either way, you guys win the fight. That's already been uh, proven. Take the pick on Jana. What? 
she like flash the wall or something? I think she did. No, oh, she's, she's just good. fast as crap. Holy wow. Wow. Champs quit. She's <laughs> moving at uh, fo only 425 base movement speed because she didn't go Moby's. To give you perspective, the full speed Evelyn build with like Celerity, Dead Man's, Mesh, Lich Bane, all those movement speed items. Evelyn's moving at like 510 static. So yeah, Evelyn's way faster than Janna. Janna moves really fast because her Zephyr passive gives her a shitload of passive movement speed. Uh, yeah. All right, let's see. She's only moving 425. She's actually not that quick. She just juked, yeah, juked us somehow. Now that she's in combat, she loses her movement speed. She's at 3, 389 now. She's back at 4. She went back to 460 there for a second. Is there an item giving her movement speed? She's like, something's happening. She's just getting bursts of movement speed there. Isn't it the, the mythic, the Shirelius, that gives movement speed? I think so. Grants to buy a 6% movement speed. Power action. Protecting another ally champion grants bullets. Oh, okay, yeah, that's a I didn't even know. I didn't even know. Yeah, so apparently her shielding speeds are up. That's interesting. Now, there's really I, I don't like passives like that when there's no thought process behind <laughs> Like there's never a bad time for her to shield then it's just like always speeding her up. Yep interesting the, Those are the type of passives I think that are bad for the game when you literally don't even have to read it, but no matter how you use it It's good for you <laughs> And anyway, it's like, okay. Oh, well. Uh, at this point, you guys are four dragons away from Assault. This isn't what's going to win you the game unless you guys want to play this game for another uh, 5, 10, 15, for another 15 minutes, just about. Another 10, 15 minutes. You want to get the soul. It's better to take it than nothing, though. Find the Volibear pick. You are into the E. Couldn't get quite behind him. Ideally, you run a little bit farther to where your R is technically behind him. That way you fear him in the right direction. So don't don't be afraid to run longer with your E than you're doing. Mm -hmm. Just pill the Diana. Blue Smiter. Use that blue smite. It's a big speed up for you. And it's slow against her. You do it at the end. Trish shoots her away, unfortunately. Cat is gonna get the kill. Point and click Katarina for the win. <laughs> and uh, that's that's basically GG's. Once again, I would say we'd probably stay for a turret because Jin's bot, Trist is full HP. Your team, including you, in general, whenever you guys get a kill, you're just leaving. Like top lane, we killed Aatrox several times and we had several opportunities to kill him solo. This turret's still up like 30 minutes into the game. After you guys get a kill, unless you're gonna die for it, you take the next turret. Like unless it's just super dangerous, but they're, they're respawning. Three respawns and there was one of them bought. Volibear can't solo defend this. You guys will kill him. Trish full HP, Cat full HP. All right. Getting turrets is a big deal. You can only ever take a turret if there's not several people defending it. So if there's not several people defending it and there's several of you, you just generally do it. Take the turrets, win the game. This guy's pinched. Aatrox shouldn't be up here. This is way too deep on the map. Way too deep. Now he's pinched. He has nowhere to go. Katarina's going to point and click on him. Gonna press her point and click abilities. They should really swap her to a skill shot mage. Too much damage for point and click. Yeah, her damage is insane. Yeah, it's ridiculous. They buffed her. There was like probably eight patches ago. She was a top eight mid laner, and then they hit her with a fat buff and it turned her like to a top top one, three, five, whatever. I like you going for the mid turret instead since they're on the top turret. It makes sense. Generally, you go for the outer turrets first. Like the furthest turret sticking out onto the map, you take first. But since they were under that one, that was a really slick move coming over here. You're going to have to back off now. Trist isn't willing to stay, even though there's three of them dead. And you guys could have easily taken that. You go for this bot wave. That's good. You're constantly taking resources. Good, good, good. You didn't just reset the base to buy an item. You pushed a wave to get prio first. I would probably get Executioners still. Even all, with Bramble? Like both? Mm, I guess I would see what your team has. Since your Tristan has Grievous at this point, you don't have to. But if she didn't, I would get uh, Executioners. Right. Oh, what is happening? Did she just Hourglass two times? No, she didn't. You gotta stay disciplined. If we have the stronger team, we just have to pill. We don't have to really engage. So at this point, I don't know where we're running to. I guess you were trying to decide if you wanted to run away or not. Yeah. 
Just pill for the cat if she's OP. Yep, that's GG's. Shove it in and then. There's no, there's no reason to go for Baron here. You have three of them dead. Full HP Trist, full, basically full HP Kata. You guys take Inhib and uh, minimum, minimum. This is an Inhib minimum double turret plus turret top minimum. Uh, All right. The whole point of Baron is when they have a lot of wave clear like a Malzahar or a Lux and you shove waves up to their turret and then they just clear it instantly. That is Baron. That is its purpose. Harold's purpose is to win the game. Harold is the best objective in the game. You can get two Heralds as long as you take the first one before 13 minute mark. And then you can get to the inhibs. Once you have super minions, Baron, Baron's kind of useless because the super minions let you push towers regardless. Uh, okay. Dragon Soul, honestly, kind of useless. It's a big bait. People will, are willing to like die and throw for it. Uh, El Elder is really the only dragon worth coin flipping for because whichever team gets it just wins by default. You, you never coin flip for... <laughs> you should never coin flip for Dragon Soul. Or if, if you feel like you have less than a 50% chance of getting it or your team's going to die, you're going to die. It's generally not worth going for Dragon Soul because it's just so underwhelming. You know, you're going for Dragon. And it's once again, it's still not Soul. Like that, that the difference between you guys having that dragon and not having that particular one isn't going to change the next outcome of the fight whatsoever. It's just not going to change anything. Now, once you guys have Soul, it will start changing stuff a bit. But individually, they're pretty useless. Now, there are some exceptions. Like obviously, if your champion has weird AD scalings, like these just weird ass abilities, like Jin or Rengar, where they get like percent based AD, then. Uh, Infernals, single infernal dragons can be a pretty big deal, but in general, they're not. Dragons in general, any dragon type. Lux gets picked, you pull off immediately, you guys go pressure top. One of you can stay bot. Oh, there's just no point to force a. F oh, wait, you guys traded for Jin. I didn't even realize Jin died. What the hell? Okay, so they killed Jin, so you guys are fine to fight then. As long as you have even numbers or more, you just fight. Lux, I, I don't know how she dies, but she runs all the way up. She dies after you guys kill Jin. That's just insane. Yeah, you guys just win by default at this point. Two of them can just 2v4. Oh, uh, so yeah, the big things, I will say, I, I could see you easily hitting D at least D4 as a jungler just because you're not getting solo picked. A lot of junglers do dumb shit and they'll fight for a scuttle they know they can't win. They'll die. They'll fight for an objective they know they don't have the prio to take. They die. They'll randomly invade. They die. You're, you're not dying at all. It's insane. You're actually just not dying because you're... You play on the safer side of the spectrum where if you feel like the situation's not, if you feel like you could die, you just generally don't take those, which is good. That's a very good rule to live by. The, the biggest mistakes you made was you weren't pressing tab where even when you had Trinity advantage on this guy, it, it was here for like this huge second. So first of all, the second Herald's gone because you're not appreciating taking your first Herald before 13 minute mark. And you also didn't get like any turret plates after you killed. After you get a kill, you always take at least one plate minimum. Minimum. Unless you feel like you're going to die because your team's rotating. But in general, you always take at least one plate when you get a kill. Uh, and this is a free kill. He's your full guy. I'm advantage. Other than this, other than not appreciating Heralds, other than not taking plates, other than not taking a fight when you have item advantage, this game was really good. Well played, man. Uh, do you have any questions, thoughts, or anything? You want to wrap um, up with? I guess I have one question and like I have one last one. So if you like start a game, right? And you let's, let's say you are playing Nocta or whatever and you can gank pre-6, but it's not optimal. Let's right. just say that. So what do you do if your team, like all lanes are already losing? Is what he... can I do to win the game still? Because That's... I'm behind by default, right? Yeah. That's a pr pretty straightforward. They're not Nocturne plays a lot like uh, any full farm jungler. Like an Udir. Udir has more options because he's Udir, but Nocturne, Karthus, Evelyn, and others that aren't coming to mind who are full clears, it's the same thing. So let's say you were starting with bot leash on red buff on this side, you can see, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to full clear. Even if all your lanes are dying simultaneously as you're clearing, if you, if you feel like you can't get to them in time and at least get a kill, you're not going to go. Or unless they're diving, like that, that's just the thing. Is like if you can't get a kill, there's no point to go because then you're just standing there holding their hand. Oh, I won't let them kill you, and you're just standing there, and the enemies don't go in then. So if you feel like you're not going to guaranteed get a kill, there's no point of going. So you're just going to full clear. Your whole team's dying. You're you full cleared at this point. You're on your grump. Everything's done. 
if you look at your two closest ganks at this point when you're top if you don't think you can get the kill top or if you don't think you can get the kill mid you just don't do it that's it's that simple then once you're level six your teammates are still feeding they're still running it down now you have more options at level six on power farmers generally their r's are overpowered like evelyn nocturne to where let's say your teammates running it down let's say the enemy's going for a dive if you nocturne r them diving you're probably going to get the kill basically your options for getting kills get much higher and then you get the shutdown gold once you get the shutdown gold you have a chance to come back into the game as long as you're not dying like you did this game as okay. long as you're not the one dying because since you're going to be getting all these kills and all these shutdowns you'll have a fat bounty on you so you just got to stay alive don't waste time on bad ganks or bad reactions just just clear and if there's no kill you don't take it you just uh you can catch waves you can uh, only go to situations where you know you're going to get a kill that's about it man but in general on those games you will have a higher chance of losing but they're still winnable because the enemies will throw they'll go in for a random dive they'll force a random baron when you're all alive and shit like that so i would say just don't get flustered be willing to meet your teammates and you can definitely win those all right thanks ggs man take care thank you have a good one I hope you guys enjoyed this coaching video and if you are interested in coaching make sure to check out the pinned comment and link in the description down below for more information. My name is Kingsticks, thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.